Hey guys, this is Pharaoh2091, and welcome back to Let's Play Danganronpa. Last time we left off, we finished the investigation for Chapter 1, and now we are about to begin our very first class trial. Now, I've been kind of contemplating how I'm going to handle these trials, because during these trials, they actually speak, um, they, the characters actually speak the whole entire time, and... I know I've been kind of talking over them whenever they do have, like, bits and pieces of them actually speaking their whole sentences. But here, they, they're just going to keep doing it. So, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna talk over them, and hopefully it won't be that bad. I'll see how, I'll see how things go, and, uh, I guess we'll just take it from there, so... And we already, we already looked at the skills and everything, so we should be ready to go, hopefully. So, whenever you guys are ready... Pick your skills, look over your uh, ammunition, and uh, let's finish preparations. And now, court is now in session. Oh, it's like Phoenix Wright again. Let's start off with a simple explanation. You guys' votes determine trial's outcome. Finger the true villain, and only the villain gets punished. But make the wrong accusation, and everyone else gets punished, leaving your, your deceiver to graduate free and clear. Is one of us really the culprit? You betcha! Alright, everyone, close your eyes, then raise your hand if you're a culprit. You dumbass! Who raised their hand? Can this wait? There's something I'd like to ask before we begin. And, uh, what exactly is the purpose of that? Isn't it sad to be left out just because you're dead? Friendship overcomes life and death! Coming over friendship? In that case, what about that empty seat? Oh yeah, there are only 15 of us, so why are there 16 seats? No reason in particular, it just means a courtroom can accommodate up to 16 people. Well, that should do it for the intro, now let's get this party started! First, how about a summary of what went down? Go on, get cracking! Here goes, the trial will figure out which one of us is the culprit. If something strange comes up and I don't say anything, then not, and not, then not just mine, but everyone's lives will be in danger. Now, here is one of the very first, and this is probably going to be the most um, common aspect of the trials, and non-stop debate. Uh, would you like to see a tutorial? Yeah, just, you know, I think the game's probably going to explain it better than I will anyway. As you progress through the class, trial will participate in numerous non-stop debates. In this phase, characters speak one after another, and debate advances automatically. You spot a lie of contradiction anything anyone says, you refute it with your ammo. Only the ammo relevant to the debate will be loaded into your ammo cylinder. Aim your crosshair using the analog pad and fire by pressing the triangle button. Pay close, close attention to everyone's assertions and smash your contradictions with, with your ammunition. Furthermore, if you run out of time, the debate will end in failure, so please be careful. You, you can check the controls at any time to, um, by pressing start. I wish you the best of luck. Over and out. Now, when it comes to these non-stop debates, I think what I'm going to do is, um... I could solve it right away, but what I'm probably going to be doing is, uh, waiting until, um, the whole thing's done. Let it be known, Taiga Mizona was murdered! Dude, we know that much. The murder occurred in Negi's bedroom. She was in the shower. And while in the shower, Mizona was suddenly attacked. And we killed without a fight. Okay. So that's how things are going to go. Hmm. That's not right. As you can see on the top right, the, uh, the timer keeps going down. You see our hearts as basically our... Well, our health, if you want to say. If you, keep, if you keep getting things wrong, you're going to fail this phase. Or I don't know if you fail a phase or you actually fail the entire court. Um, the, the whole class trial. I'm not really sure about that. And then the stars are considered that like your MP. I think if you hold the R button, uh, the R trigger, should I say, around on a PSP, you actually slow down time a little bit to help aiming, to help, you know, aim your cursor or whatnot. And uh, it helps sometimes, and there well, there you go. Hmm, that's not right. If my zone didn't fight back, then it doesn't make sense for my room to have been in that condition. It's the end of this round of debate. The, the round will repeat until you see through, refute the hidden lie or the contradiction. Did you notice during debate the portions of the same assertion were a different color? Those are called the weak points. Holes you can use to refute a character's assertion. 
Weak points highlight particularly important words and phrases in the character's assertion. Your ammo is only effective against the weak points. So using your ammunition, target a weak point and blast the smithereens. And you can also hold circle to fast forward through the debate. This is something I did not know until the very end because, well, I didn't actually, you know, lose this thing. I just automatically hit triangle when I saw the, you know, the words, so it's whatever. All right. So that's what I'm going to be doing is just like, let, let this go over once and then I'll solve it in the next round. So let's uh, quickly go through it. Here's what I'm saying about holding the R button, see how things go really slow. It, it builds up again after a little while, but you know, hey. And you see in the crosshair, I'm going to press triangle, boom. And you see in the, like, the crosshair, you're like, I'm not the one moving it like that much. It, like, it does it automatically, kind of, I guess, to throw you off guard or whatever. So, well, there you go. And you get everything's perfect, you get an A. Even, it's not, even if not everything's perfect, it's, I use slow pretty much get an A. Wait a, wait a minute, Fujisaki. You're forgetting about the state of my room. And what are you, what are you talking about? It's obvious from the room's condition that some sort of struggle took place there. A struggle? Between who? The struggle was between Mizono and the culprit, of course. So Mizono wasn't suddenly attacked while she was in the shower. Rather, she fled to the shower after being attacked in Nagi's bedroom. The culprit gave chase and that's why she was killed. If you so much as looked at the sea, you would have been able to spell things out for you. I'm really sorry. Alright, now let's move on. Indeed, the next topic is that of the murder weapon. Ah, so this is where it's come to. I need to make sure everyone knows what Maison what weapon the culprit used to kill Maisono. Okay, doesn't seem hard enough. I mean, so it doesn't seem that hard, so non-stop debate, so once again, and our ammo's for kitchen knives. What was the weapon he used to murder Sayaka Maisono? He was a blade sticking out of Maisono's stomach. Without a doubt, that was the murder weapon! The copper took that dagger and freaking shanked, it, shanked him with it. That sick little son of a bitch! Alright. The blade found in his own stomach, more than, more than likely, it was the blade that disappeared from there. From the kitchen. So, let's go here and boom! And of course, these, uh, these awesome debates are like easy as hell right now, because you can't really refutes any other claim, but trust me, it'll get, uh, it'll get more complicated as the game goes on. This is only the first trial, after all. That blade wasn't a dagger. It was a kitchen knife. Huh? A kitchen knife? One of the knives from the kitchen was found missing after the incident. And it, it was that knife that which was used for murder. Oh yeah, you're probably right. If you look real close, I think sticking out of this chick's gut does look like a knife. Yeah, we get it. She was killed with a knife. What's your point? I mean, really. Anyway, you spin it, Nagi's still a killer. That's right. Nagi's room was the crime scene. What more proof could you want? Wait a minute. I... You defeat the purpose of this trial by drawing a conclusion before we finish our debate. I'm just saying, the outcome ain't gonna change no matter how much we talk about it. No, that's not true. I'm certain we'll reach a breakthrough if we continue the debate. Huh? A breakthrough? She's right. There's gotta be more buried here. Because I, myself, know I'm not the culprit. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. And, oh, and let's, let's get another supplemental territory, uh, tutorial for this not stop debate. So that means something is gonna be changing now. You can concentrate by holding R. Oh, wait a minute, I did I explain that already. As you saw, the flow of the debate slows down, and, uh, and, yeah, and it slows down the drift of the crosshair, so it makes it easier for us. But it kind of takes away the concentration gauge, or, like, the MP, if you want to call it, so, you know, you can't really use it all the time. But it recovers, you know, so, you know, give it some time. Alright, so now, let's get this one going. We got Asahino's testimony. That's what she said that we, uh, she didn't see us in there. Alright, so the weapon was a knife. But what's your point? Nagi took it from the kitchen. When the cafeteria was empty, he snuck it out. Then he stabbed Sayaka, Sayaka Mizono. So, see? So Nagi is the culprit. Hmm, then it's settled. Hasta la vista, baby! 
Really now? I didn't go get that knife. She was in the cafeteria the whole time, so she should know that too. Of course, she, uh, we're talking about Asahina, how she said that she was like drinking tea or whatever, and she saw nobody there, so... Boom. Yeah, sometimes I'm probably gonna miss these uh, claims on accident. Like, like I'm aiming somewhere like, a little bit off, and it's like, damn it. But, you know, hey, whatever. Oh, there you go. Uh, another phase. Wait, it wasn't me who took the knife from the kitchen. And next you're gonna say I'm not the culprit. Say all oh, your wine. You you're just talk. And what if I said there was a witness? Isn't that right, Asahina? Huh? I mean, you told me so yourself. Oh yeah, she did tell us that, you know, she came here to have tea and you know she didn't see me go in there. Boom. Easy as that. Asahino, the knife disappeared while you were in the cafeteria, right? Yeah, it did. And did I come to the cafeteria while you were there? Um, I don't think you did. You don't think? No, he didn't. I'm positive. The knife was taken while Asahino was in the cafeteria. I didn't go there during that time. In other words, I couldn't have taken that knife. In that case, then what about this? Makoto Negi and the Brainless Mermaid are accomplices, and she's falsifying her testimony. Brainless Mermaid? Wait a sec, why am I an accomplice? On a subject, I'd like to ask a teddy bear. Is there, if there's an accomplice, are, are they too considered a villain? Well, here's your answer. While it is possible to bring along an accomplice for a murder, only the perpetrator himself can graduate. Which means no matter how much they assist in the crime, that the accomplice has nothing to gain. It doesn't seem like there seem likely that there's an accomplice. But the culprit may have not known about that rule. Ah, oh, just get on with it! Come on! There's not, there's not, there's no accomplice this time! Oops, I said too much. Anyway, I didn't go to the cafeteria and I didn't take the knife. Which means I'm not the culprit! Then, who really did go get the knife? It is possible Asahina, who was in the cafeteria the entire time, could have done it. No, it wasn't me! Is there perchance another one who can co collaborate that? I. Last night, I was in the cafeteria drinking tea with Sakura the entire time. Um, just for a second. Sakura is... I. Gotcha! Okay, I think I'm gonna say if she was, an, uh, she was a woman or not. So either Hina or Ogre snuck out with that knife? Nope, that's not possible because I'm uh, out with it! Last night I slept in Asahina's room. I was scared after watching that creepy video so I kind of forced Sakura to stay the night. So anyway, we've both got alibis. Isn't that against the rules? It is prohibited to sleep outside a bedroom, but sleeping in someone else's room isn't prohibited. So I don't think there's any problem. Of course there's a problem! It's unwholesome! A man and a woman sleeping in the same room. But I am female. Oh, forgive me! But if the two in the cafeteria didn't do it, there are no other. No, there remains one another option. Does there not, Asahina? Yeah, actually, while we were in the cafeteria, one other person did come by. And this doesn't come up early. And this didn't come up earlier. Why? Because it's someone who's no longer here. Someone no longer here. She can possibly mean the one who came to the cafeteria was the victim, Sayaka Mizono. Mizono. In which case, the person who took the knife is, well, it's pretty obvious. It's. Mezono, and you have time that you have yet the answers kind of quickly. I mean, a little bit, but it's obviously Mezono who took it. If you get it right, you get that little like, whoa! I think he says like, I did it, or hold on, something like that. Maybe it's like objection. No, the objection will probably be like, you know, yeah, like you know when, when I refute a claim. But I think he like, I looked up translations. I forgot what he exactly. He said. I think he says I, I've got you there. You're wrong or something like that. So, it was Meizono who took the knife? That is indeed how it appears. Furthermore, thinking back of it now, her behavior was a little unusual. She entered the cafeteria and went straight to the kitchen, not a glance in our, in our direction. It said she came for a drink of water, but more than likely, that was when... So the woman who took the knife was the victim herself, Meizono? I'm sure she thought she could use it to defend herself. So the culprit stole the knife Meizono took to defend herself, then killed her with it? 
Which means just because someone didn't take the knife doesn't mean that they're in a clear. Huh? Yes, yeah, see? Nagi really is the culprit after all. I told you I didn't do it! So that was your goal all along. The twisted discussion lead us down the wrong path! Mmm, you are a perfect job provider of a terrifying ability. Crap. At this rate, I really will be named a culprit. Why don't you get it, guys? If you decide I'm a culprit, everyone is dead! Wait. Don't you think it's a little early to declare Nagi the culprit? The culprit took actions which are inconceivable for the owner of the room. Until we solve the uh, I, uh, aforementioned mystery, blah, we can you say for sure Nagi is a, uh, can we say for sure Nagi is the culprit? Inconceivable? The hell are you talking about? Something you expect to find Nagi's room when the crime scene was conspicu uh, cons conspicuously missing. You know where it's going, don't you, Nagi? An epiphany anagram is about to begin. That's a new aspect here. You really don't get that many. You usually get like one, maybe two in a trial. But, you know, it's e they're easy. Pretty cool though, but here. The next phase of the class trial is called the epiphany anagram. Your objective is to reassemble re some vital keyword related to the incident. Solve the keyword using both known letters and the flying letters. Shoot down the flying letters in the correct order and reconstruct the keyword. Aim your crosshair with the pad and press X. If you shoot down the wrong letter, the influence gauge will take damage, or influence gauges are hearts. If you deplete the influence gauge and run out of time, the phase will end in failure. I wish you the best of luck. Over and out. Something you would expect to find at the crime scene if it wasn't there. I can feel it. It's right on the tip of my tongue. And here we get started with the epiphany diagram. What should be in our room but isn't there anymore? Let's see, we got H and an R. Ah, could it be our own hair is missing because of a lint roller? Yeah, that's easy enough. Now, obviously, when it's different colors, you gotta keep pressing X until like it's red and hit it one more time, and then you actually, you know, get that letter you need. Very easy. That's right. There wasn't even a single strand of hair in my room. So you're saying? The culprit destroyed evidence? Now, if I were the culprit, would I really need to clean my own room so thoroughly of hair? I mean, there's nothing unusual about my own hair being my own room, is there? If you clean a room of hair to remove any trace of the fact that my zone had visited your room, is that so hard to believe? If you wanted to remove any trace of her rather than her hair, he would have removed her corpse. Mmm, a reasonable claim! But then, why wasn't there any hair? Because the copper cleaned it, of course, to hide the fact they had visited the room. Which means, yes, it's unthinkable the copper could be the owner of the room. Then, Nagi isn't a culprit? But is it is acceptable to make such an important decision based solely on hair? No. There is further foundation on which we can say Nagi is not the culprit. We are listening. Think back on the vic uh, vicinity of the shower. When the where the crime took place. Mizona was first attacked in Nagi's room, and after that she fled into the shower. The culprit chased after her into the shower. There he stabbed and killed her. At that time, was the culprit able to enter the shower unhindered? Whatever do you mean? In order to enter the shower, the culprit had to exert considerable effort. Doing so, the culprit would have left behind clear evidence. Do you remember, Nagi? The culprit had to exert a considerable effort to enter the shower. The evidence for that is the thing the culprit broke. And sometimes during the class trials, you have to, like, you know, present evidence. Now, he, what did the culprit break? Well, we know that our. Where the hell is it? The doorknob is broken. But it doesn't make sense why we broke it, considering that uh, it's, it's a, it was just simply misaligned. And he could open it. So, it's weird. The shower's doorknob is evidence of the effort the, cul the culprit took, right? What happened to our doorknob, dude? It was broken. The doorknob to my bedroom's shower was broken. See? The upper screws are removed. And the uh, knob was undone. It's true. But why is the doorknob... To break the shower's lock, the culprit removed the entire doorknob. This is another action you can see by the room's owner. Further basis, Nagi couldn't be the culprit. You're saying he wouldn't bust down his own door? But if he had to break it down, he'd break it down! Hardly conceivable! So you still don't understand. 
In that case, let's go back over the progression of the crime. I'm sure you'll understand that. What Karagiri means by actions are inconceivable by the room's owner is hidden in the progression of the crime? Huh. And now some debate is about to begin. And we're getting another supplemental tutorial. However, uh, we'll get this, we'll start this, um, you know, non-stop debate in the next episode, guys. So, yeah, we're, de we're definitely getting somewhere of this, you know, trial. And I hope, we get, I hope it gives you guys a idea, you know, of what the hell's going on, how these trials are going to be conducted, you know, uh, in the, uh, you know, the upcoming chapters. And, of course, there's still many aspects we haven't seen just yet, but trust me, it gets cooler and cooler, and the trial just keeps getting crazier. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play Dangan Rampa. I'll see you guys later.